Thank you for choosing a Marais water heater. We are certain that you'll be very happy with your purchase and are pleased to offer you this video as a tool to assist you with the installation and use of your unit. First, you should securely mount the water heater to a vertical surface in its desired location. This unit is portable and is intended for outdoor use. The location of use should be an outdoor area with at least two feet of obstruction-free clearance from the top, bottom, and sides of the unit. The flame in the unit requires plenty of oxygen to burn cleanly and efficiently, so the area in which the heater is located should also have free access to fresh air. Avoid exposing your unit to rain, snow, or excessive wind. This unit should never be located in a sealed environment. Your gas water heater must be hung vertically, with the water and gas connections at the bottom and the exhaust at the top. Angled installation will cause a malfunction of the unit and can be a safety hazard. Make sure that the installation location can support the weight of the unit and ensure that it is secure before using. Never mount the unit directly to sheetrock without utilizing the expansion screws. Use Teflon tape as necessary to ensure a good seal. Next, you should install your cold water supply. The fitting on the unit is half inch male FIP, so you can connect it using threaded female PVC, braided metal water lines for appliances, or you can use a hose barb adapter and use standard half inch tubing if you're using the water supply by a pump. For the purpose of this installation, we are using braided metal appliance water lines from our local home improvement store. It is important that you utilize the supplied rubber gaskets on the water connections to avoid water leaks. Then gently tighten the cold water line. Over tightening can cause damage to the unit. Now you can install your warm water connection using the same procedure as the cold water. The warm water outlet on the unit is also half inch male FIP and can be connected using threaded PVC, tubing, or braided metal appliance hose. In this instant, we are using braided appliance hose. This is very important. If you're using PVC for your warm water return, you must use PVC that is intended for use of hot water, commonly referred to as CPVC, as standard cold water PVC can melt at higher water temperatures. If using half inch tubing, it must be heavy duty tubing suitable for high temperature use. At this time, please insert batteries into the battery case at the lower right side of the unit. Pay close attention to the polarity of the batteries as marked on the case. The battery at the rear of the unit should have the positive terminal facing down, and the battery at the front of the unit should have the negative terminal facing down. After the batteries are installed, turn on your cold water supply to the unit and turn on a hot water faucet or engage your water pump. Check for and correct any water leaks at these two connections. Listen for the clicking of the unit. This signals that the ignition is engaging and telling the unit to ignite. If you don't hear any clicking of the ignition, double check that the batteries are installed correctly and that you are getting a strong water flow through the water faucet. If you're not getting sufficient flow through the unit, the most common cause is insufficient water pressure. The unit requires a minimum pressure of 8 PSI, so if you are using a pump, your pump must have a lift rating of at least 15 feet to ensure that it is producing 8 PSI. When using a pump, lift rating is critical for proper heating performance. You can check the lift rating of your pump by looking at the chart either on the outside of the box or in the instruction manual provided with your pump. It is also possible that something may be obstructing the water flow through the unit. Check the water inlet screen to confirm that no debris is being trapped inside the water line. The inlet screen is thimble shaped and tucked up inside the tubing of the incoming water line. You will need a flashlight to check it correctly. 
Once you confirm that the ignition is clicking, you can turn the hot water faucet or pump back off. Next is the installation of the gas supply, using the propane hose and regulator supplied with the unit. Wrap the gas inlet pipe with Teflon tape of the type intended for use with gas before connecting the gas supply. This is different than Teflon intended for use with water, and is usually yellow or pink in color. Install the supply brass fittings. It is extremely important that you use a backup wrench at this stage of installation, as over tightening of the gas fitting can cause gas leaks. If the wrenches you are using are two different sizes, the larger wrench should be the backup wrench and the smaller should be the wrench you use to tighten the fitting. Once the fitting is installed, the gas line can be connected. The side with the regulator should be connected to your propane bottle. The other side should be connected to the unit. You must also use a backup wrench at this stage as well. Do not over tighten gas fittings. After the gas connections are made, you can turn on the propane bottle to supply the gas to the unit. Do not open the propane bottle until both sides of gas line are connected. At this time, you must check for gas leaks by both smell and sight. First, spray the gas connection with soapy water. If you see bubbling at any of the connection, this is indicative of a gas leak, which must be corrected by reconnecting the fitting and or gas line and then retesting. If you don't see any bubbling, wait a few minutes and then check the connections by smell. Remember that both propane and natural gas are heavier than air, so check for leaks by smelling beneath the unit as well. Check carefully for leaks. After you have verified that there are no gas leaks, you are ready to use your water heater. Turn on the pump or hot water faucet and start enjoying instant, endless, and energy efficient hot water right away. 